guess what I did? I jumped on the bandwagon of finding out if Walmart bikes are any good. I guess we're gonna see. I'm totally geeking out on mountain bikes right now. I just bought a Trek Roscoe 8, a 2024 model, and I've been super stoked on it. But I sit up at night and I've been watching all these bicycle videos on YouTube, totally geeking out on it. And it's unacceptable behavior, I can't do that. Um, so rather than just watching videos, I acted on it and I went out and bought this Ozark Trail 29 inch mountain bike. This is a Walmart special, $398 new. And it's awesome. It has like modern style geometry, tapered head tube. It's got a one by nine drivetrain. It's got all kinds of cool things. 29 inch wheels that are like double walled. It is a really cool machine on paper and it's proven to be a pretty cool machine on YouTube as well. So I kind of wanted to get one and see if it'd be a good bike to have for a spare around the house um, and something the wife and kids can ride. So. I wanted to do it a little bit different and just kind of give some insight on this thing. If you are kind of in my position where you're an old biker, but you're getting back into the sport, maybe this will be a good way to get back into it without breaking the bank. We're gonna pull this thing into the shop and adjust some things, make sure it rides well, and go see if this thing will rip a real trail. As you can see, the shop is a total disaster right now. Space is at an all-time premium. So we're just going to have to lean the bike up over here on my filing cabinets next to this Jeep engine and see if we can get this thing dialed in for a ride. I don't really need the lights on this thing, so we can kind of unclutter it that way. I'll keep those around just in case I go do some night riding around the neighborhood. First thing I've got a problem with is that seat doesn't go low enough. Look at this. It is, it's bottoming out on the uh, bottle cage mounts. So we're going to pull the seat out. I'm going to shorten the stem or the post, pull the seat out, shorten the post a little bit. I wanna get the seat kind of back a little bit. It's like scooted forward all the way in its adjustments. We'll bust that out. We also have some issues up here, but let's do this part first. Now, I don't have a bunch of fancy bike specific tools, but I don't have any shortage of the wrong tools. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this post like I would have done in 1982 when I borrowed tools from my grandpa. All right, pipe cutter for the win. This also works good on handlebar ends as well as plumbing yard work, sprinkler systems. Now you'll be happy to know that if you bought an Ozark Trail mountain bike, this Ridge 29, that it has a 31.6 millimeter seat tube. So if you wanna put a dropper post on it, you most certainly can. It's the right size, you can buy parts for it and you can just do a dropper post. It's got room on the handlebars because you don't have a shifter on the left side. You got internal cable routing already ready to go. So, piece of cake. Funny thing is, one of my first jobs ever was actually working for a bike shop as a mechanic. I wasn't very good at it. Now I can slam that seat down for the downhills. Let's see how that feels as far up as I want it. Oh yeah, that's totally fine for climbing. And if I can slam it down to there, 
on a descent. That's going to be fine. It'll be out of my way. We can go do sick jumps and stuff. All right. Step number one. Seat post modification. Done. Didn't cost a dime. Now we got rid of the the lights on this thing. We should probably get rid of the uh, reflectors as well. And we can ditch this, what they call the dork disc. Um, basically it's just a piece of plastic that's going to be a problem at some point. I haven't pulled reflectors off a bike in a long time. I don't want to just yoink it off of there. Do I? I don't want to bend a spoke. This is just fun. I'm trying to make a Walmart bike cool. Come off of there. Give me the plastic junk. This is the pinch the camera between your knees cam. There we go. I guess what's next is going to be figuring out if these... Oh, pedals are tight or not. No, they are not. So we'll go ahead and tighten those up. All these parts are pretty cool. They all appear to be like standard sizes and, you know, decent quality. They are a little bit cheesy, but I mean, you're buying a bike at Walmart. They've got to like save some money. Oh, that's it right there. That's much better. Roll those back right to about there. Dude, this thing's just, it's all in the details. I'm excited to go rip this thing and see if it works good. Watching videos, it makes it sound like the uh, chain's gonna fall off on me like multiple times, but that's all right. I can put a chain back on. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I actually bought this bike used. Um, it was on Marketplace for 240 bucks, which is rad because these things, you know, at the Walmart, they're 398 which is a good deal. There's a ton of these bikes out there for cheap because people bought them thinking they'd ride them and didn't, like any bike, you know. Um, but yeah, I joined some... Uh, some Facebook group, because I'm a nerd. It's a Facebook group just focused on these bikes. And uh, there's a bunch of people on there that bought them used for $150. And I was like, dang, I thought I killed it at 240, but apparently there's good deals going around on these bikes. So make sure you watch Marketplace. And uh, I think that's how I'm going to continue to build this thing up, too, is going to be mainly used parts off Marketplace. I'll probably get a couple parts off of Amazon that I don't want to buy used or something that's real specific, but we're getting close. This thing's going to be rad. I'm going to adjust my bars around a little bit or my shifter and grips around a little bit just because some of this is kind of funky. These brake levers are massive. They're like motorcycle brake levers. They go way out too far, and I want to be able to like two or one finger it, but they're just uh, all kinds of in the wrong spot. So I'm going to just sh shift things around a little bit and see if we can find something that'll work. This thing has lock-on handle grips. Kidding me? How am I doing this? I want to to try and run brake lever inside of shifter and see if I can get spacing where I want it. Oh, that's going to be fine. So Dude. when I first got this thing and I was bringing it home, I had all these dreams of like, I want to paint it. I want to like make it not look, I want it to be all bright and cool looking and maybe not so walmarty but the more i work on it the more i'm like i am gonna fully embrace its walmartness such a nerd all right i think we're good to go let's get 
this thing unloaded. It fits in my Suzuki just the same as the other bike does. That's good. I also threw on this like homebrew little GoPro mount that I made out of a water bottle mount that I got at Walmart and then a piece of aluminum. All right, let's go see if this bad son of a gun one's gonna work or not. Right. On the trail, on the Ozark Trail, this kind of feels like a real mountain bike to me. It's pretty good. The shifting's not terrible. The front fork's a little bit clunky, but that was kind of expected. The proportions all seem to be in place. This is a medium frame and it feels, feels like I'm reaching way farther than I am on that track. I would say this medium is probably more like a large on other bikes. I have a long climb ahead of me and if this thing gets up to the top of this hill, we've got some rad trails coming down. Gosh, I'm out of shape. First little rocky climb section. Front end's light, it gets up stuff pretty easy. Still climbing. This thing's doing great. Feel like I'm stretched out a little bit on the bars. I'm 5'9", and uh, I feel like I'm stretched pretty good. So, as far as upgrades go, I'm gonna be pointing out the same ones that everybody does. It definitely needs a shorter stem. That fun little sharp downhill corner Woohoo! This thing did fine. That was the one I mentioned in my other video that I liked how this full suspension loaded it and unloaded. But the rigid or hardtail is doing just fine. This will be our first little taste of some sort of higher speed fun downhill stuff. Pardon me. All right. This little spot's kind of fun. Oh gosh. Those forks definitely do not soak that stuff up that great. Brap. This thing's out doing real mountain bike stuff. Careful not to fall off the edge. I'm about halfway up my climb. I think this trail's about an, a mile and a half and about a thousand feet of climb. I'm probably wrong. It's probably three quarters of a mile and 800 feet, but whatever. I'm out here climbing this pretty good trail on a pretty cheap bike and so far, I'm stoked. So All right, I'm gonna jump back on it. I took a little break, made sure that my video had audio this time because the last trip out was to a total like bust. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. Let's climb up to the top. We got a long ways to go, but it's a rad view. Come on, little ridge bike. I haven't even really tried to wheelie this thing. There's no people around. We can try it here. All right. That was weak. That was super also weak. Let's try that again. Maybe grab another gear. There we go. Nice. Normal bike. I dig it. I'm in low gear, a little bit out of the seat, rocky, chunky hill climb. Nice. Come back and get my camera. Got it. Turn the old bike around. About 
fall over. Let's go get that section of climb again. As I'm climbing up this final stretch of trail to the top, up to the radio towers, that's when you know you got to the top. Whew. I feel like the bike is doing really well. It climbs good. There's a few things that I'm not sure how to, how to fix. The fork's pretty clunky, but that we'll get to on the way down. As far as climbing goes, the gearing isn't totally right doesn't have really a super deep climbing gear pretty hard push to the top of this hill but man the payoff is worth it we made it to the top of the mountain and the bike is still in one piece it didn't drop a chain i didn't skip any teeth the thing did great it's working fine i dropped the seat back down so that we're ready for some downhill action obviously there's things that you would upgrade on this bike, like putting a dropper post on it, because that's just kind of the new normal. But, like, legit, I just rode a $240 bike up to the top of this mountain. It is so rad. All right, let's go see how this thing performs going down the hill. I think it's gonna get a workout. You guys ready? Let's see if this'll do it. Holy cow, that front shock is weird. Whew. I got a little western. Come on, bike. It's not bad. All right. This little drop over here is pretty fun. Not bad. My camera mount could use some work. Cruising. See how this thing works in the real world. Cool little rock drops right here. Oh, that was a little rough. Uphill section, stand up since my seat's all the way down. Uphill berm. This thing climbs good out of the saddle. Feels fine. A little jump here. Landed like a sack of potatoes. This is a fun little drop here. I am noticing these tires really don't have much grip, especially on like a side hill or a side load. They just slide right out. They have plenty of knobby for like this dirt and loam, but on the rocks, they're kind of slick. Whew. Rock drop. Ugh. I want to set it up for this drop over here. This thing's gnarly. I'm not doing that. Beep, beep, beep. I meant, I want to set it up for this drop. I don't know what this bike's made for, but I'm trying this. Rad. Where's this one go? Oh, that's cool. Try not to fall off that. Now we're doing some good cruising. Not quite so rocky downhill. This little section right here is one of my favorites. Let me get my camera situated and we can let it rip. 
See how these brakes work. Ah, tires are not gripping. This section right here is fun. Come down here, a little jump, into another jump. This one's awesome. Oh, slipped a pedal. That's recovered. Yeah. A little brap. Brap. When I was back at the car, I aired the tires way up because I wasn't sure how strong the wheels were going to be. And I sacrificed a lot of traction. We're going to drop them down just a little bit and see if I can hit some of these corners coming up a little faster. That's probably plenty low. All right. These are kind of cool. I mean, for a cheap bike, they're Kenda tires and they have good looking tread and they're 29, 2.35s. So all these things are all kind of things that you get on more expensive bikes. All right, let's go see how this thing hits these corners. This next section coming up is awesome. All right. This spot, this is, this stuff's fun. There's some of these like little rollers on this one. And then we get into a, whew, came off that a little hot. We get into some rad berms up through here. All right. And the rear tire is all over the dang place. Berm after berm. This place is so fun. I'm definitely not hitting this with the speed or confidence that I have on the trek, but having fun nonetheless. Getting down to the bottom of it. We'll roll out of here and go hit this little jump track. Call it a day. Pop out of here. Go hit these jumps. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see if I can't screw this up. Let's try that again. Nice. That was better. All right, let's get out of here. I'm pushing my lock now. All right. That was good. The bike did it. Now, does this bike need anything? I just ran a pretty hard trail. And no, it doesn't need anything. It's still functioning, it's still a good bike. Do I want to do stuff to it? Yeah. I wanna throw the catalog at this thing. Like, I wanna change everything about it. But you could go out and buy this thing and go ride, get back on a bike and start enjoying it for very little money. That's pretty awesome. All right, I think that's it for this dirt head shed. I'm going to the bike shop to buy this thing something nice because it did a good job. I can't stop. I can't help myself. Whew. All right. I need food. That's food ish.